you may have heard the phrase, uh, life is about the journey or success is not a destination, but more so about the journey. But we don't necessarily have the tools to practically apply that to our life. And I've had quite the journey up until this point. I've uh, been very blessed and fortunate to live out my dreams uh, in a very short span of time. And I was faced uh, at a very young age with an inflection point in my life around like, well, what do I do with the rest of my life? And how do I continue on this journey? And so basically, as I go through this talk, uh, I want to break down and talk about like how I thought about that, what that transition looked like, and basically a framework which enabled me to figure out how to move forward on that journey. And it starts out with, who am I? Secondly, how am I? Third, what do I want? And then last, who am I becoming? But first, let me walk you through my journey. That's me uh, at probably under five years old or so. Uh, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, and if you're born in Pittsburgh, you have no other choice but to be a Steelers fan. Uh, you, get, <laughs> you get delivered in the hospital and they immediately hand you a terrible towel. And so uh, naturally, that's a Christmas tree in the background. My parents got me a, uh, a football uniform and said, have at it. This is your life. Uh, but it's funny how things work out because that actually was my life. And moving forward, in 1992 was my first year of football. I started out, as mentioned, I'm from uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the west side to be exact. Uh, and started playing football at the age of seven in 1992. Uh, so I'm dating myself a little bit, but it's all good. As I matriculated throughout my football career, uh, I had a lot of success. Uh, was a high school All-American, uh, put up a lot of records at my high school. We had a lot of success as a team. Uh, we only lost three games in high school. And then I carried on to the University of Michigan, uh, where I was a two-year starter. Uh, you know, we won Big Ten championships. I went to three Rose Bowls, uh, but unfortunately, I lost all three. Uh, so, you know, the good and bad there. Uh, but then I had a fifth year of college and I went to West Virginia University. Uh, and uh, that year we went and played in the Fiesta Bowl and I finally won a bowl game, my last try uh, in college. And so we were really thankful for that. But then the story gets better. Um, you know, I'm finishing up my collegiate career and then every childhood dream back, if you remember back to the previous slide or two previous slides, uh, where I had the Steeler outfit on, uh, my dream became a reality. And I became a real Pittsburgh Steeler. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and in 2008, uh, in the sixth round, uh, with the 194th pick, uh, got to remember those numbers is very, very important, uh, especially top of mind with the draft being last week. Uh, but with the 194th pick of the 2000. Uh, eight draft, I was selected by my hometown team, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, and that was a very surreal moment for me because a few years after uh, that picture was taken with me in front of the Christmas tree, I was literally a little kid walking around Three River Stadium uh, asking tailgaters uh, for a dollar to support my, my youth football organization. We would literally go up to them and say like, would you like to be a booster for our organization? And they would give us a dollar and we would just give them a piece of paper. Uh, not even a candy bar. You may see some of the kids handing out candy bars. We didn't even give them that. We just gave them a piece of paper and said, thank you. Uh, so, you know, I came a really long way. Uh, but that rookie season, uh, I actually won a Super Bowl with my hometown team. And so when we talk about, like, that journey, uh, it was very empowering and very surreal. But ultimately, having the ability to live out my lifelong dream in front of my family, my friends, and everybody who helped me get to that point uh, was truly a blessing. It didn't stop there. Uh, I actually came here to New York in 2013, and I played one, seasons with the, one season with the Giants. Very forgettable year. Uh, we were not very good, uh, but I did enjoy my time here in the city. And then I wrapped up my career in Chicago. Uh, still currently reside in Chicago with the Bears, 2014 and 2015. Uh, again, very forgettable seasons. And so basically, I started my career uh, in Pittsburgh with my hometown team. Uh, at the highest of highs and then progressively got worse as we move forward. So talk about a journey, right? Uh, but uh, when I wrapped up my career after NFL career after eight seasons, uh, and unfortunately my career was cut short because I had a back injury, I said, what now? It happened like that. And just like that, I was done. 
literally done. My kids are laughing. They think that's funny. But it was a real deal, right? Like I had committed 24 years of my life to pursuing a dream, to pursuing excellence, to honing my craft, making sure that I was showing up day in and day out. And it wasn't always easy. And I gave you the quick synopsis of 24 years in like three minutes, right? There was a lot of hills, valleys, et cetera. But I was faced at the age of 31 with a bad back and hurt feelings because no one really leaves the NFL on their own saying like, bye-bye. Like they say, your services are no longer welcome here, right? And then they say, carry on and kick you out of the building. And so I was emotionally hurt, I was physically hurt, and I had to figure out who am I, right? For the very first time in my life at the age of 31, uh, I had to figure out like, who am I when I'm not tackling somebody? Who am I when I'm not trying to intercept their pass? Who am I when I'm not lifting weights? Like these were all very, very big questions that sound very simple, but again, I had to think about how am I going to take that journey inward and continue on with the next chapter of my life. And so let's start with, who are you? That's a real big question, right? And I think sometimes we, uh, we struggle to answer that question. Uh, when we look in the mirror, you know, we're looking from a vanity standpoint and saying like, how's my hair, how's my makeup, whatever it is, but like, do we really know who we are, right? And do we have the framework to really understand who that person is in the mirror? I know I didn't for sure, uh, but basically, basically the summary, summary of your life to date, right? And this is inclusive of your, your thoughts, your paradigm, your experiences, your relationships, all inclusive, right? Like there's no singular or one word in, in which I think you could just, uh, define or describe yourself but really taking into total account like what you've done to date. And I really emphasize to date because who you are today does not have to be who you are tomorrow. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but really having a ground level understanding of like, what's my starting point? And so I, when, I, when I exited the NFL, I had to really take inventory and say, what is my starting point? But remember I said, I can't tackle anybody anymore. Like I can't go out here and tackle any of you. So I had to really think about it and say like, all right, if, what allowed me to go out there and do that for a very long period of time, to subject myself to the physical endurance, uh, the tackling, et cetera, and really ask myself, who am I when, uh, when uh, thinking about the, the next, uh, next phase of my life? When I understood like, who I was at my core, and who I was at my core was somebody who was hardworking, grit, determination, discipline, et cetera, that, all those characteristics allowed me to go out there and be great, to pursue excellence and be a professional athlete for eight years. That's who I was at my core. I had to understand like, how am I, right? And that's a re another interesting question when we think about who we are and how are we, right? You know, we get asked this question all the time, like, are you good? How are you? Like, how you doing? And we normally say like, yeah, I'm good. You know what I mean? But are we really good? We should ask ourselves that. And I had to ask myself that, right? And I came across this in my line of work. This is the feelings wheel that was developed by Dr. Gloria Wilcox. And it's basically uh, an opportunity for us to expand our vocabulary and language and better define and give a better answer when somebody asks us, how are you, right? Because it's too easy to say, I'm good, right? And if you notice and take a closer look, good is not on this wheel. And, it, and so it's really interesting when we talk about like, when somebody asks you, how are you? And, I, and we normally say, I know I, I say a lot, I'm good. That's not even a word to describe a feeling up here. Really interesting, so I want you to sit with that. But opportunities uh, to develop language and communication uh, and, and help us define like our emotions and better understand who we are so that we can better communicate to our environment, those who love us, those who we're working with, to optimize and, and ultimately live uh, a healthy and successful life. Another big question, what do you want? I get, off, I, I get often asked that question, like, what do you want? And a lot of times I say, I don't know. And I've been told, like, I'm very, very comfortable not knowing. But that's okay, because I, ha I know that I have the aptitude, the desire to go and figure it out. And this is a really big question when we talk about, like, what do you want? Uh, for, at the age of seven, like, I wanted to be an NFL athlete. I accomplished that at the age of 23. Then what? Right, like, how do you keep redefining and, and understanding that whatever you want it's, it's a pursuit, it's about that journey, and the journey inward is never ending, right? All the, everything exterior and external, like there's, a, there's a, like a checkbox or an accomplishment to say like, okay, I've achieved that. And once you get to that station or destination in life, or you achieve that goal or accomplish that goal, then you look around and you say, what's next? What can I do more of? 
what is my next opportunity to pursue? And so the mindset that I've adapted is that like it's a continuous journey. No matter what I accumulate, no matter what I acquire, I'm on this continuous journey inward to continue to figure myself out uh, and learn about like myself, the world around me, and how I can help others. And so this question around like what do you want is really, really important to me. And ultimately, you know, I draw a lot of inspiration from the book The Alchemist. I named my company Alchemy. Uh, but basically, you know, this quote very it stuck out to me the first time that I read the book. Uh, and it goes as such. When, and when you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you achieve it. And that's, from, again, from the book, The Alchemist. And I truly believe that, right? Like, what is our heart, what is our truest heart's desire? Like, what do we want, uh, you know, to, to accomplish in this life? We only get one shot, right? And so, like, how are we identifying that and maximizing every day in pursuit of that greater goal? Uh, and and it, it doesn't have to be something, again, that's materialistic. I think about it and I say, all right, well, I'm very conceptual by nature. Like, what do I want? And there's two things that I want out of life. I want to be healthy and I want to be inspired. If I'm healthy and I'm inspired, then everything else falls into place. I have the opportunity to go out there and develop skill. I have the opportunity to go out there and develop relationships because I'm healthy and I'm inspired and I'm motivated to go out there and serve. Always accurate, occasionally precise. Now, when I brought up that question around like, what do you want? You're like, damn, what do I want? I don't know. The reality is, and this is a secret, we're all figuring it out. Everybody acts like they got their stuff together or externally, but man, like if you peek behind the curtain, you would see that, like, man, I'm figuring it out just like you or just like you, right? And so th I think that's a really important thing for us to, to acknowledge is that we don't always have it figure, figured out. And that's why I said earlier around, like, I'm comfortable not knowing or I'm comfortable not having it all figured out because I'm generally always going to be accurate. I'm going to be in a ballpark, right? And we'll get closer to that point of precision. Uh, but, you know, the reality is we don't always have all the answers and we have to be comfortable with that. And so, again, thinking about how, to, how can we be accurate and occasionally precise? There's no, you know, like data-driven approach to life or living. And I don't even know if I would want that, to be honest with you. Life is about art. Life is about feeling. Life is about emotion, right? A lot of things that we have planned for our lives to say, like, we look back like, oh, did, it, did, did that go the way that I exactly planned it? Probably not, but that's okay, right? There's no failure or there's no uh, loss in saying that things didn't go exactly as planned. And lastly, you know, when we think about like those three previous questions, ultimately we get to a point of like who, we are, who are we becoming, right? And if we think about like that what do you want, that what do you want propels you into, into activity, into future state. Like once you identify what you want out of life, then you go out into the world and try to make it happen. And when you're out in the world making it happen and experiencing people, things, et cetera, you ultimately become something different than where you started, right? So we always have to keep this pulse in saying, like, who am I becoming based off of my daily actions, my, my relationships, my activities, my experiences, et cetera? Who am I becoming, right? Thinking about, like, growth. Growth is a natural part of life. If we look at, uh, the last, particularly the last two years, but every year we're a new person, daily bread. Every day we become something new. And so thinking about, like, who am I becoming along this inner journey? <clears throat> we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but in habit. I'm sure you all have seen this uh, quote at some time before, but the reality is excellence can be replaced with any word in the vocabulary. It could be ex excellence, it could be a friendship, it could be whatever, right? Like we have to think about our daily habits and what they're building inside of us and ultimately what are we becoming because, because of them. And so it shows up as this. Let me get out the way. This is a cycle, right, that we could think about and a framework that we could think about for that journey, that journey along life, right? Who am I? How am I? What do I want? What am I becoming? It's a cycle. Once we get to that what am I becoming point, then we ultimately get to a place where this is who I am, right? And so we start that cycle over and over again. And so that's the part, and that's the beauty in it, right? And, you don't have, and that's why I say you don't have to be that person that you are today, tomorrow, right? Every day is a new opportunity. Every, every month is a new opportunity. Every year is a new opportunity to continue to grow, develop, and build the life that you want. And so today, when we talk about reimagine, and that's the theme of the con conference, I invite you all to reimagine your journey. Like, what drives you? Who are you? You know, like, when you think about it, like, who are you? How are you? Really important question during Mental Health Awareness Month. How am I? And being honest with those answers, right? Like, we cannot run from ourselves. 
Uh, what do I want? And then lastly, who am I becoming? And so with that, I invite you all to reimagine your journey, take that journey inward because a healthy life starts with a healthy mind. Thank you. <laughs>